What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are breaking down week 25 of fantasy hockey and what that means is that we're going to be going over the teams with the best and worst schedules and also the streamers to help you maximize your games. I'm assuming most of you guys that are watching this is going to be your finals matchup, your final fantasy playoff week, all of the weeks that we've had, all the hard work that we put into our team. It is coming to this point so we want to make sure we understand the schedule and the players that you want to stream this week to help you give you the best advantage that you could possibly get. So in terms of the schedule, there is something very important to understand. And that one thing is that off nights do not matter as much as they normally do. We are coming off a week, week 24, where off nights pretty much determined uh, what streamers you added, right? We had the Canucks and the Sabres players only having two off nights. That was the most off nights that any team had in week 24. Uh, to a week, week 25, where we basically have every night other than Saturday being potentially an off night for you. So off nights and streaming, it won't matter as much. Yes, it does have some implications. There are some teams that could have four off nights, some teams could, that could have three off nights, depending on your fantasy team. So I will touch on that in a little bit. But yeah, just wanted to note that in terms of this week's schedule, there's not too many heavy nights other than Saturday. All right, guys, let's talk about the teams with the most games and off nights this week. One thing I want you guys to understand in terms of the off nights, Thursday and Sunday are not green. They're not officially considered an off night. However, they're pretty close to Monday and Tuesday, which are considered off nights. The difference, Monday and Tuesday, there's eight games. Thursday and Sunday, there's nine games. So not a big difference. Make sure you check your schedule and see which nights you have open roster spots on. With that being said, we have the teams of four games and three off nights this week being the New York Rangers and the Edmonton Oilers. If you have open roster spots on Sunday, then the Rangers could have four off nights. So make sure you check your schedule. Like I said, the Rangers also have a very good opponent goals against average. Oilers, four games, three off nights, very solid schedule. Decent opponent goals against average. Not the very top, but still very solid considering the Oilers score a lot of goals. Moving down to the teams of four games and two off nights. I do want to say that the Avalanche and the Capitals could have more than two off nights for you, so make sure you check your schedule. There's a chance they could have four off nights, which would be very beneficial. Um, but to list this off, guys, we have the Islanders, the Lightning, the Panthers, and the Avalanche, um, all having above a 3.00 opponent goals against average. Very, very solid. Then we got the Penguins, the Devils, the Capitals, and the Los Angeles Kings. Finally, we have one team with three games and three off nights, that team being the Seattle Kraken. They play Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they have the best opponent goals against average this week in the NHL, so very solid. They play the Ducks and the San Jose Sharks, so the players on the Kraken could be very good. If you happen to have a lot of heavy nights, which is probably rare, but if you do have maybe like Thursday or Saturday being a heavy night, then having players on the Kraken could be good to maximize your games as well. We also have some teams with four games and one off night. However, like I told you guys earlier, if you have open roster spots on Thursday and Sunday, then yeah, the Blues could have three off nights for you. It all depends on your fantasy team and which nights you have open roster spots on. With that being said, the St. Louis Blues, four games and one official off night. Very good opponent goals against average. I'm a fan of streaming Blues players this week because of it. We also have the Minnesota Wild, the National Predators, and the Ottawa Senators having decent opponent goals against average. And then we have some teams that I would avoid. I wouldn't necessarily pick up players because of their opponent goals against average. These teams being the Blue Jackets, the San Jose Sharks, and the Montreal Canadiens. Now, in terms of the teams with the least amount of games, yes, we have a bunch of teams that only play three times. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. But what is not good is the Vegas Golden Knights only having two games. Yes, they're both off nights, but off nights won't really matter as much this week as they normally do. And they don't have a good opponent goals against average. They have some tough opponents, so not a huge fan of streaming Golden Knights players this week. And also not a huge fan if you hold a bunch of Golden Knights players on your fantasy team. Now I want to talk about the teams with the easiest and hardest opponent records. First off, the easiest opponent records. We have the Seattle Kraken way above any other teams. Like I told you earlier, they play the Ducks and the San Jose Sharks this week. So very good for Kraken players and the goalies, Grubauer and Joey Decord. 
Then we got the Islanders, the St. Louis Blues, the Philadelphia Flyers, the New York Rangers, the Arizona Coyotes, and the Anaheim Ducks. If you have any of the goalies on these teams, there's a good chance they have solid weeks. If they are available on the waiver wire, check them out too. Now for the teams with the hardest opponent record this week, the goalies on these teams, I wouldn't necessarily stream. If you're holding on to them, it might be a tough go. You never know, guys, because the NHL can be so random at times, but... Yeah, not the best for this week, guys. We have the Montreal Canadiens, the Boston Bruins, the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Edmonton Oilers, the Detroit Red Wings, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and the Chicago Blackhawks. As you guys can see, the Bruins and the Canadiens by far have the worst opponent record this week, so might be tough for the players and their goalies. Now I want to talk about the teams with the highest opponent goals against average, meaning that these teams play teams that generally let in a lot of goals. If you want to stream players from these teams, that could be a good option. If you already have a bunch of players from these teams on your fantasy team, that's good as well. We have the Seattle Kraken, the St. Louis Blues, the New York Islanders, the Philadelphia Flyers, the New York Rangers, the Buffalo Sabres, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. On the flip side, we have the teams of the lowest opponent goals against average, which means that these teams are playing teams that generally do not let in a lot of goals. If you have a lot of players on these teams, it could be a rough week for you. We have the Boston Bruins, the Montreal Canadiens, the San Jose Sharks, the Vancouver Canucks, the Vegas Golden Knights, the Columbus Blue Jackets, and the Calgary Flames. Now is the part of the video where I give you guys the best streamers to add for this week. I told you earlier about off nights, how they won't matter as much, but I still think that they are going to be an important part of your streaming strategy. As you guys can see here, I've highlighted three teams. And the reason I've highlighted these teams is because there is a potential that these teams have four off nights. You have to check your schedule. Like I said, you have to check your fantasy team, but you could have open roster spots on all these nights, which means that streaming players from these teams could be highly beneficial. For example, Sunday and Thursday are not considered off nights. There are nine games going on on these nights versus Monday and Tuesday, which are considered off nights. Um, those nights only having eight games. So not a huge difference. With that being said, Rangers, Avalanche, and Capitals, let's talk about some players that you could potentially add to get those off nights and to maximize your games. Now, for some of these teams, there's not the biggest variety of options available, specifically the New York Rangers. Uh, they are not the most deep team, but there could be some viable options that are going to have low roster percentages, specifically Alexis Lafreniere. He gets good minutes. He's producing. He's a fantastic option for this week, considering the Rangers great opponent goals against average. And then we got some deeper league options. I wouldn't necessarily target these guys unless you're in a deeper league. Keandre Miller, Jack Roslovich, Schneider, Wenberg, Kule, and Kako. Now, in terms of Avalanche players, I included Valerie Nichushkin on here because he's under 90% rostered. But if Nichushkin is on your waiver wire, you're in a taco league, okay? So anyways, he's on here. If you want to pick him up, if he's available, please do because he is a legit beast. He is not fully healthy though. I will say that. Hopefully he's back for this week because I do have him on my teams. But anyways, guys, we do have some other options here. Jonathan Drouin, I'm pretty sure he's back on the first line power play. He's been playing beastly lately, getting a lot of minutes. I'm a big fan of Drouin this week, considering they could have four off nights and they have a very good opponent goals against average. This is the avalanche we're talking about. They can score a lot of goals no matter their opponent schedule. So um, yeah, please take a look at avalanche players. I also wanted to mention that Drouin is currently on the first line still, so very good. Uh, we got Devin Tabes, very solid. He's been producing good lately. Um, there's always a chance that he puts up like two or three assists in a night. We have Casey Middlestat. He's currently in the top six, but what's interesting is with Nichushkin being injured right now, Middlestat finds himself on the first line power play. The problem with Middlestat is that his peripherals are garbage, but nonetheless, being in the top six and on the first line power play right now is very good. If Nichushkin is healthy, then I would probably bump Middlestat down in terms of a priority ad, but right now it's looking pretty good. We also have Arturi Lekkinen not on the first line, not on the first line power play. Not the biggest fan of that. I was hoping that, you know, he would be getting better deployment here, but but still, he has the ability to put up points in the top six on a very good team, and he puts up good peripherals as well. Then we have some deeper league options, Sean Walker, Manson, Colton, Wood, Duhame, and Parise. Lastly, we have Washington Capitals players. They don't have the best opponent goals against average. 2.89 is above average. It's in the top 15, but it's not the upper echelon. Still, we have some good options here. Dylan Strom has to be my favorite option top six first line power plays producing like crazy yes he's kind of due to cool down but he's just been so good lately and he gets a lot of minutes so 
pretty much a no-brainer here if they have four off nights for you. We also have Connor McMichael, who's currently on the first line with Alexander Ovechkin. He's been producing very good lately. Very solid option. Then we got some other options. TJ Oshie, when he's healthy, if he can stay healthy for longer than a week, he is pretty good. Puts up good peripherals, gets good ice time, gets good power play time. We also have Max Pacioretty, doesn't have the best ice time, um, but he's still solid. Probably a deeper league option here. We got Hendricks Lapierre. He's been getting first line power play time sometime. Um, they've been kind of mixing it up, bouncing Pacioretty off, Lapierre off, but he still gets good power play time. So if he's on the first line power play, he is a good option. Then we have some deeper league options, guys. These are deeper league options. Sonny Milano. I know he just scored a hat trick, but no, I'm not a big fan of him in terms of his deployment. Doesn't get a lot of ice time. Um, we got Malenstein. We got, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, Miro Shinchenko. I'm definitely butchering that, but that's okay. And finally, we got Fairberry, Dowd, and Sandy. Next up, I wanted to highlight some Seattle Kraken players. Like I told you earlier, the Kraken, they play three games and three off nights with the best opponent goals against average this week. The reason that is, is because they play the Sharks on Monday and the Ducks on Friday. If you want to stream them, pick them up, you know, Sunday night, pick them up Monday, drop them Saturday. That could be a very good option. We definitely have some good streaming options on the Kraken. A lot of these players have low roster percentages. Let's talk about this guy's Jared McCann, probably the best option available. He is their best scorer. He has the opportunity to go off in these games, so please take a look at him. We got Matty Beneers. Normally, he would be lower on this list, but he's really starting to produce lately. This is him bouncing back, in my opinion. He was due to bounce back. He had such a low shooting percentage. Definitely a sophomore slump season for Matty Beneers, but I think he's a great option for this week. Then we got Eli Tolvanen. Doesn't have the best ice time at times, but he puts up amazing peripherals, and I think he's a really solid option. Jordan Eberle, he's been getting good ice time lately. He has the ability to put up points. Oliver Bjorkstrand, always solid. Andre Burakovsky, he's okay. Probably more deeper league option. Then we got some other options. Yanni Gore, Jane Schwartz, Adam Larson, Will Borgen, and Jamie Oleksiak. Moving on, we have some more streamers. These are players that have four games and are on teams that have a 3.00 opponent goals against average or better. Now, obviously, a lot of these players might not be available depending on your league size, but we have all of them being under 90% rostered. We have Brock Nelson, Robert Thomas, Bo Horvat, Jordan Cairo, Pavel Buchnevich, Brandon Montour, Anthony Duclair. This guy has been producing like crazy lately. The reason that he's producing is that he's on the first line with Nikita Kucherov. Uh, I do think he's due to cool down because his production is definitely not sustainable, but as long as he's on that first line with one of the best players in the world, Nikita Kucherov, he has the ability to put up a lot of points. So. With this schedule, having four games and a good opponent goes against average, definitely an underrated option. Then we got Jake Neighbors, definitely an underrated option as well. Great peripherals, great ice time lately. First line power play time. I'm really impressed with what I'm seeing with Jake Neighbors. Uh, we got Brandon Hagel. He's not on the first line, not on the first line power play, but still very good ice time. And I think he's due to have a pretty good week. Then we got some other options. Kyle Palmieri, he gets good power play time, um, gets you know top six minutes, good peripherals, very solid option. Vladimir Tarasenko doesn't have the best ice time, but currently he's on the first line. He definitely has the ability to go off, which we want in our finals matchup. Then we got Sam Bennett. He hasn't been producing very good lately, but I think he's kind of due to put up a good week. Uh, puts up really good peripherals as well. Then we have some defensemen, Tori Krug, first line power play, uh, Gustav Forsling, he's been great the entire year. And then Justin Falk, he gets a decent amount of power play time, good minutes, very good peripherals, always a solid option. Now, as you guys can see on the left side here, we have some deeper league options from these teams. We have Braden Shen, Ryan Pulock, Anthony Sorelli, Honors Lee, John Gabriel Pajot, Nicholas Paul, Brandon Saad, Alexi Toropchenko, Evan Rodriguez, Anton Lundell, Tanner Janot, and potentially more depending on your league size. Finally, I wanted to give you guys some other streamers that I like for this week. These are players that have four games and are on teams with a 2.80 opponent goals against average or better. We have Nico Heischer, Anze Kopitar, Drake Batherston, Brian Russ, Victor Arvidsson, Gustav Nyquist, Trevor Moore, Ryan O'Reilly, Shane Pinto, Michael Bunting, Chris Letang, Luke Hughes, Evgeny Malkin, Jacob Chikrin, Eric Carlson, just to make some comments here. Um, Shane Pinto, underrated option, you know, first line power play. Michael Bunting is getting really good minutes on the Penguins. 
Um, so definitely underrated. Uh, Quinton Byfield, not on the first line power play anymore. Um, Victor Arvidsson is currently on the first line power play. So that's why, you know, Arvidsson is ranked way higher. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Philip Deneau, uh, Matt Zuccarello, Eric Halla, who's getting really good minutes lately, even though he's not producing. And then some deeper league options here. Marco Rossi, Ryan Hartman, Jason Zucker, Jeremy Lazan, and Ryan McDonough. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel this year. I put a lot of work into these videos and I appreciate all the you know kind comments, all the people that like and subscribe my videos. Uh, so yeah, hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And last but not least, good luck in your finals matchup. You know, this could be a semi-finals matchup for you, but I'm assuming most of you, this is your finals matchup. So good luck, and I hope you win some money in your leagues. Peace out.